We're going to take a tour of the Adobe Audition workspace, also known as the user interface. When you open Audition for the first time, this is probably how your workspace will look. It might have a little more detail to it because here at Infinite Skills, we use a slightly lower than standard screen resolution to ensure that the font is more legible. It's a little bit larger, relatively speaking. We're working at 1280 by 720. Your screen resolution might be more along the lines of 1920 by 1080. Nevertheless, your workspace looks probably more or less like this. And to give it some context, I'm going to open up a couple of files here. So I'll go to open recent for me and open up 0302 navigating workspace. And you may open that as well if you wish, but I'm just going to use those for some context here. The Adobe workspaces all look similar in the Creative Suite, that is. If you've worked with Creative Suite tools, you've seen a workspace kind of like this. A few years ago, Adobe decided to try to make the workspaces across the Creative Suite consistent and customizable so that people would be comfortable going from one product to the next. They've done a really good job on that. So let me just talk about this. If you have worked with Creative Suite tools, my discussion of it might be somewhat redundant, but I think it'll be good to kind of hang in there and go along with me as I discuss this. The workspace is divided up into what are called panels and frames. A frame contains panels. So this is a frame here. The orange border is around a panel. The frame is the larger area that holds these two panels. Over here, we've got one, two, three, four panels inside this frame. Now they also refer to frames as panel groups. So there are four panels in this panel group. And notice that I'm accessing each panel by clicking on the tab. The two most important panels here are the files panel over here and the editor panel over here. The files panel is where you have links to the assets that you're working on in Audition. It's important to know that Audition is what's called a reference-based editor. When you import something or open something in Audition, you're not moving it. You're not taking it from someplace on a hard drive and copying and pasting it someplace else. You're merely making a link to that file on your hard drive or wherever that file is located. So you're not moving things around. That's what's called a reference-based system. And those links show up here inside the Files panel. Now I'm going to talk about the Files panel and other panels in more detail in other tutorials. I just want to give you a general feel that this is where your links are to the assets in your project. When you bring things in, you work on them in the Editor panel. And the Editor panel has four different views, although Adobe tends to refer to only two different views. They talk about this multi-track view, which you can access with this button up here, or the waveform view. And the waveform view shows the currently selected file, select the file that was selected inside the multi-track session when you switch over to the waveform view. So here's the multi-track view. The currently selected file is this four voices spread. If I change that to organ chords and go to waveform view, then the organ chords will show up inside the waveform view. But really the waveform view is three different kinds of views. Here's the waveform, but you also have the spectral frequency display like that and the spectral pitch display, like that. So if you think about the editor panel, Adobe likes you to think of it as two different views, multi-track and waveform, but the waveform really is three different kinds of waveforms, pitch, spectral frequency, and then the waveform itself. So let me go back to the multi-track. I can click on multi-track here to go back to multi-track, or I can go to this drop-down list, which shows all the files that are in the files panel, all the multi-track sessions are stored up above here in this little area that's marked off by these two sort of subtle parallel lines there. So I click back to that workspace. Now we're back in the multi-track session. Now there are quite a few panels, many of which are not visible or not active or not forward as it's called. If you click on Mixer, that brings the mixer forward. And the mixer is the mixer that's working with this multi-track session. If you go over to this panel over here, there are four here, one, two, three, four, and you're thinking, you know, hmm, how do I see this fourth one? Well, you can use this scroll bar in the top to see what the fourth panel is. If I click on Effects Rack, that's where I get my effects. So let's say I make some changes like this. Let's say I have Effects Rack forward, and I have the Mixer forward, and let's say now I close the program. So I close it, and when I restart it, those two guys will be forward again. The Effects Rack will be forward, and the Mixer will be forward. So whatever state you leave your workspace in, that'll be the state it opens up in. Let me open up those files again to keep that context going here. If you want to go back to the original condition 
of the workspace, the absolute pristine starting point. You go up here to the upper right where it says workspace and there's a drop down list. And right now we're in the default workspace, but we're in a slightly changed version of the default workspace because we brought some things forward. If I click this drop down arrow, it'll say reset default, basically, question mark. You don't see a question mark, but believe me, it's there. If you click that, it'll say, do you want to reset it? Are you sure? It's not really a big deal, but they ask you this anyways. And then you say yes. And now we're back to that original setting where there was a media browser forward, files forward, the editor panel forward, like that. Now there are many other panels that are even not in these frames or not in these panel groups. To see all the panels that are available inside Edition, go to the window menu, click that. And these like amplitude statistics, batch process diagnostics, playlist, phase meter, none of those guys are showing up here. They're not available here. You can make them show up if you want to by clicking on these things and they will pop into your screen. And that's what you do when you want to customize a workspace or at least add a panel that you don't see and you want to work in it. That's called the customizing. And I explain customizing in the next movie. In the interim though, we're going to accept the current default thing, but I want to show you what happens. Here's Mixer and you're going over here, but hey, Mixer's not checked. Why is that? Well, it's inside the workspace, but it's not forward. So if I click Mixer, that'll bring it forward, which clearly you could have done simply by clicking on the tab anyways. Now, what about all those other panels? You know, when would you use them? Why would you use them? Well, Adobe's engineers created workspaces that use those panels. So for example, there's one here called Mastering and Analysis. All those analytical tools, like diagnostics, will suddenly show up inside this workspace. Here's a Frequency Analysis panel. Amplitude Statistics panel, Properties panel, Diagnostics. So these are all the things that you weren't seeing before that now show up in this workspace, a workspace that's geared towards analyzing audio as opposed to editing audio. This is just the workspace designed by the Adobe engineers. It's a custom workspace, and you can customize your own workspace and name it as well, which, again, I'll explain in the following movie. I'll walk you through a couple other guys here. Classic is sort of the original one which has a big time indicator, a big transport indicator, and the zoom here all separate from the what used to be inside the editor panel. I'll go back to the default and you'll see that time is inside the editor panel here, the transport's here, and the zoom buttons are all over here, all contained within the editor panel. So you can switch from the classic view to this view. If you go up here again, you can select some other options. One's called radio production. Now, radio production is an important part of the history of Audition. Audition started its life as a program called Cool Edit Pro from a company called Centrillium. And a few years ago, Adobe bought out Cool Edit Pro and reworked it for the Adobe product line and called it Audition. So Cool Edit Pro had its strongest market in the radio market. And so they don't want to forget that they worked with a lot of radio audio engineers back in the day, and they want to make sure that they continue to hang on to that market by giving them a workspace in which they would have some comfort level. So we'll go back to the default workspace. And I'll point out one more thing, just to make sure we're clear on this. If I add a panel that will go, let's say, inside this panel group down here, inside this frame, and I know that diagnostics will go inside that frame, for example. Sometimes when you have so many panels inside one frame, you won't be able to even see the other panel. Here you can see the four that were in there by default, but the fifth one, which you may not even know is there, is not visible. So if you ever think there's another panel in there, and you can sort of get a sense of that by the space here in the scroll bar, it gives you a sense that, oh, I got a long ways to scroll. Whenever that happens, just use the scroll bar to get over to that missing panel. So if I had media browser selected, then there's diagnostics here to the right. So that, folks, is how you navigate inside the Adobe Audition workspace.